very good evening to all of you who have come here. And uh, I am really thankful to Tony sir, first for uh, giving, me, sir, giving my introduction in such a lavish manner. <laughs> I don't deserve all that. Uh, and uh, for having introduced myself to this uh, TQIM, because I think this is a very good forum for interaction. And I am quite confident that in the times to come, we all people who are sitting here, and I have been here once before, and I have met a few of you here already. And I was quite impressed with the presentations which were done there also. <coughs> and I really feel the answer to most of the problems which we are seeing in the modern world today is integrated medicine. It is not modern medicine. I am very clear about it, although I am an allopath, but I am very clear in my mind it is integrated ap approach towards healing. And we do not have even a single center to say off in India which is having an integrated approach. And that is what is the need of the hour. What I heard about from one of my patients is about a, about a clinic in London, Mayo Clinic, where they are already doing this type of work, but there are not many many people uh, who know about that clinic and not many people can afford to go to such an expensive clinic. So the idea should be if we could sit all together and this is what I would be really approaching uh, Tony Sir for, if we could all uh, sit down together and make a comprehensive approach as to how we could tackle uh, patients, particularly people who had uh, already tried modern medicine and had, have had failed uh, results with that and they are still looking for a healing method and not able to find out how. So my topic today would be to introduce you to acupuncture and to uh, go with you with the different approaches in acupuncture what it is all about, how it works, so that by the end of the session you could have had a good knowledge base about the system and then probably you could be in a position to even uh, have some relevant questions which will come up in your, in your mind and I would like to answer them. So, today's agenda is we have to have a belief system, what is acupuncture, where is it most effective, what are the theories of acupuncture, what are the techniques we use in acupuncture, what are the types of acupuncture which can be done, then the results and the limitations and what is the typical treatment plan. All these have been uh, uh, courtesy Tony Singh sir always because he has helped me modulate my entire presentation in such a beautiful way that I could probably use this presentation in many more uh, 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 places also. Next please. So the belief system. Very simple. Uh, these when acupuncture originated, and they say it was about 2,500 years, 500 years ago, that long is the history of acupuncture. Although there is an, uh, there is an interpretation of our Vedic transcriptions, and this uh, happened when I was in Japan for a conference in Tokyo, uh, where a Japanese doctor from our Vedic scriptures did a presentation, and he proved it in front of a galaxy of people and a lot of Chinese people also had come for that conference that acupuncture actually is Indian in origin, not, not Chinese and the Chinese got up and clapped and they said you are right because always the claim has been that origination of acupuncture was in China but what happened was basically we have been invaded by everybody from all over the world and so many people came and took away literature from our country and then they developed it. So obviously the credit of development goes to China and we have no questions on that. But the question is that our Vedic scriptures mention about Sui Vedan as a form of treatment which was done so many years back. And that Sui Vedan was used to treat a large number of ailments. Even the ear, I will come to that also, the specialized form of therapy. I use an acupuncture every day. Now ear is closest to the brain and that is why the signal to the brain from where everything happens can the, be the closest, can be the ear which can signal, send the signal to the brain. And so that is why the point at which ladies wear the ear ring is the eye point of acupuncture. And if you do a random survey anywhere you are sitting, you will find more men wearing glasses than women. And the reason is simple. Because gold is considered to be a stimulant. If you put silver hair, probably it will not be a very good idea. But gold is very good because gold is known as a metal to be a stimulant. So it will stimulate your eyeball muscles and keep them strong. And that was the philosophy with which the Indians in villages used to put this. 
and not the fashion statement, which we probably now see a lot of people. As a matter of fact, it's a very good idea when you see so many earrings around, which are, because all of them are acupuncture points. And I can actually tell which areas of your body would be benefited if you were to put those rings there as I go through with them. Now, the, this, the last, last slide please. Now the five elements. This is the theory which originated about acupuncture and today also when we go to uh, China to learn acupuncture where I did my training, they will always teach you the basics. This is very important to understand where the actual thing originated from. Because now we have modern techniques of acupuncture, modern studies in acupuncture, but when it originated, it had the five element theory. And that five element theory was that from the wood came the fire, from the fire came the earth, from the earth came the metal and from the metal came the water. So these five elements have to be in consonance with each other, in balance with each other for good health. So whenever there is an imbalance in the energy flow between these five uh, elements, disease happens. Next please. Now what is the concept of qi? Chinese medicine, uh, acupuncture, when we talk of uh, energy, it is known as qi, qi. Qi is nothing else but prana, but qi. So there, the concept there is qi. So they have been talking about qi. Now what is qi? Qi is energy. It is the movement factor in life. So when we are moving around, it is the qi which is making us move. When we don't feel like moving, means our energy levels are low, means our qi is low. And it is activating, enlivening, animating. And it comes from three sources. So the first source is prenatal qi, which we get from our mother, from the umbilicus. So that is the umbilical cord which transfers the energy from the mother to the child. That is the prenatal qi. So if the prenatal qi is not good, so you see, everything can be explained. Today, if a woman is staying in a polluted atmosphere, if she is taking that type of an air, if she is not taking good food, so obviously the chi which she is going to put to the child will also be poor chi. So obviously the prenatal chi which we get from our mother is also as important as the chi which we later on get from food. After we are born, then we eat food. So food is a source of chi. And the, the third source of chi is air. Air is what we breathe. So what is important is that all these three sources are as important in our lifetimes when we talk of chi. So if our prenatal chi is poor, then we can think in terms of developmental disorders in children which we see. If our food chi is poor, that means we are eating out, we are eating the wrong food, we are eating a lot of fried food, we are eating burgers. There is a lot of talk now about healthy eating. Why is it? Because the type of food we eat is the type of energy we will get out of it and then the air. So again the quality of air, if it is not good, then we are not breathing the right air. Obviously the type of energy which is going to be produced in our body is also not going to be good energy. Next please. Now this chi in our body flows along the energy channels, just like blood. So as an allopath I was taught, it is the blood which is flowing in my body and through these, uh, through these blood vessels only that we are able to run uh, the entire body. But in Chinese medicine, in acupuncture, when we talk about, we talk about energies flowing through channels. So there are 12 body channels in all in uh, acupuncture and these are the body channels and then there are two midline channels. One is the front midline channel and one is the back midline channel. So in all you have 14 channels through which this energy is constantly flowing. The example I am giving you is of the chi flow along the lung channel. Now if you see the exactly the energy flow is showing here so that nothing to do with anything else. This cupping technique of creating vacuum is at acupuncture points has been in practice for many thousands of years in China. They earlier used to do it with bamboo cups. Now we have got the glass cups, the suction cups, the plastic cups also which we, I use in my practice. Much easier to do. That's the only thing. It's a more comfort thing. But uh, glass cups they used to do with fire, where they would put a cup over the area. And even in traditional India, I have heard a lot of villages and all who gadvi gudvi lagate the pet ke upar for IBS or naaf nikal gayi. And you know, people complaining of acute abdominal pain and going to the doctors, doctor giving injections, still no relief. So just by doing cupping, patients could get better. So obviously there was much more to what we were thinking of in. Uh, in uh, modern medicine, which probably the traditional medical man of acupuncture is able to take care of. 
moxibustion uh, is again I said to you again it's a Chinese herb which we can burn on the needle head also and give heat through the uh, needle also and we can also use it as a roll and just heat at the acupuncture <coughs> points. <coughs> Guasha therapy is a scraping technique wherein we uh, use a small uh, stone, it's a fine stone uh, and this stone is used to uh, do a massage type of a thing along the meridian as I said to you suppose the lung meridian starting from the chest and going to the entire uh, anterior uh, uh, arm so you can if you want to treat the lung meridian you can do that with scraping it means just a uh, soft stone is there and with that you put a special oil and just massage it along the meridian so you want to tonify the meridian you will go from in the direction of the meridian if you want to sedate the meridian you will go opposite the meridian next please Lasers, I have already talked to you, low level laser therapy, mostly used where musculoskeletal disorders like joint pains, backache, neck pains, then skin diseases, then in cosmetic problems like acne, wrinkles, dark circles under the eye. Next please. Color puncture, I talked to you, different color filters I use at the acupuncture points to balance the energy flow. We can treat migraines, we can treat sinusitis, autistic children, optic nerve atrophy, IBS. Next please. This is what I was talking to you about moxibustion. You can see this a long roll there and you can see the uh, smoke coming out. And this is very effective as a tonification treatment for deficiency disorders. Like for example in patients with diarrhea, painful joints, dysmenorrhea, asthma. Next please. Cupping therapy. This is what is a cup looks like. This used to be earlier. The, we still have these with us in our clinic. These are glass cups but now we also use the plastic cups because they are much easier to use and much easier to uh, uh, clean up everything. Right. Next please. Then sonopuncture, we are using uh, ultrasonic waves at acupuncture points. Not anywhere else, but only at the specific <coughs> acupuncture points. So also the knowledge of acupuncture has to be very important for patients to be able to, for any clinician to use it. There are bigger uh, sound heads which are used in areas, which are big areas like the back and all. There are there will be smaller sound heads also in the same machine which can be used as, as the uh, face points for sinusitis, for allergies and all. So you have got different sizes of sound heads which can be used for different type of ailments. Next please. Gua sha therapy, that's a jade stone. That's what I was talking to you about. So gua sha scraping therapy can be effectively used for relieving back aches, neck pain, arthritic pain and a special herbal oil is rubbed into the acupuncture meridian with a jade stone. Next please. Acutron, I told you we use, uh, uh, again, this, we also have this at our clinic, our patients who are needle apprehensive, we will use it, uh, with, this has got two types of stimulation, the milliamp current and the microamp, and depending upon what the problem of the patient is, we will use these uh, interferential currents, and very useful in musculoskeletal. <coughs> Next please. So, now, uh, this is again uh, Tony Sir's idea that you should share how many patients you will be treating every year. So I think we would put it on average about 40 patients a day I treat with acupuncture. So come to about these many patients a year we are doing and percentage of ailments we treat pain is 60%, neurological 10%, gyneox 10%. Thanks to Dr. Sunita because she has uh, learned some special techniques by going abroad because in the US and Canada there is a lot of teaching also available for management of infertility in acupuncture. And then we always try and share all that knowledge which we gain with our students. So we have our own CME programs going all around the year. And I will go on a weekend and uh, talk to my students in Bombay, Calcutta, anywhere and share whatever new knowledge we gain so that they also start practicing. That should be the aim. Then lifestyle disorders, diabetes, hypertension, stress, anxiety 10%, <coughs> IE and skin disorders 5%, and respiratory and gastrointestinal another 5%. And every success rate we will put at 70 to 80% which is very high as far as I feel because nobody should claim and nobody has that 100% success rate. Next please. Now what are the limitations of acupuncture which is beyond our scope? Obviously surgical conditions where we feel we cannot do uh, much and the surgery is the only answer we will tell the patients that go for a surgery. Acute infections like tuberculosis and meningitis then cancers, acupuncture is very good for cancer pains, but not for cancers per se and for life threatening emergencies. Next please. Now what will be a typical treatment plan? First visit, we do a complete history with a clinical examination and all investigations. Now we do what is known as an acuging testing, wherein 
This is a special type of our technology which has been developed by Professor Nakatini from Japan. Professor Nakatini uh, during his study on acupuncture found that in each acupuncture meridian there is one specific point which was known as the Yuan source point and that point had the maximum energy flow in it. Mm -hmm. So he identified one point in each of the channels which had the maximum energy flow and then he found a, a neurometer. He devised a neurometer in which he could measure that energy flow onto a meter and then get an average of all those readings and come to a conclusion after seeing that where is the energy excess, where is deficient and that will give you an idea which channels or meridians in the body are diseased and according to that you could actually plan a treatment strategy. I will be showing you a live demonstration of this acuging machine which we use in our practice after we complete this talk on the first floor we have put it, put it up there so that you can have an idea exactly as to how we diagnose. We did it with CERN and we were able to identify all his problems whichever he had by just going through those 12, 24 readings. So 12 readings on the left, 12 on the right. As I said to you, each acupuncture meridian is on the left side also, so on the right. So if you have a lung meridian on the left, you have it on the right. Large intestine left, large intestine right. So we take all those readings, take a mean value of that, now we are in a computerized world, so it's much easier for us. So then we come to conclusions. So the basic diagnostic methods which we use traditionally were only two, the tongue and the pulse. Just by seeing the tongue, I can tell a lot of things. By seeing the pulse, because in Chinese medicine there are six pulses, three superficial, three deep on the left hand, three superficial, three deep on the right hand. It took me 20 years to master the pulse. It doesn't take less than that. Only in the last 15 years that I am sure when I put my hand on the pulse that I am on the right. Before that, I was also learning, 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 learning. So it's a very difficult, the most difficult art is pulse diagnosis. Tongue is much simpler. And then we have these modern methods of accusing and all. So I would still go by the basics of the traditional methods and use this as an additional tool to help me identify what I got from the tongue and the pulse. So that's what is accusing. And then acupuncture treatment program is explained to the protocol of the disorder and then treatment is given. And what is the protocol typical? It could be an acute backache patient coming to me where I will call him every day for the first 5, 7, 10 days. Once the acute phase is gone, immediately put him onto a thrice a week treatment. More better twice a week, more better once a week. So the principle is very simple. The more the patient is getting better, the less he should be coming to see you. And then finish it off. Only in patients where we find he has got some allergic issues or something where we find we change of season he may have an asthma we will call him back again one week or 10 days or maybe 15 days before the change of season to give him a few preventive treatments and that's it and we, we may call him for one or two seasons so that's the other part of it then after 50 percent improvement frequency reduced to half 75 percent one fourth and acuting testing is done periodically to assess the improvement so whatever improvement you are getting clinically you should also be able to see it on the acuting machine so we do this after every six treatment sessions so that we have a record of the whole treatment uh, uh, what were these recordings and then we have another uh, after six treatment. So on the graph you can see the changes in the graph pattern if there are any. Next please. Then the most important FAQs which you uh, probably a lot of people would be here. I would obviously open it up to everybody but before that I thought this is a lot of people confuse acupuncture with acupressure. So we want to clarify that there are two totally two different systems. Acupressure is a do it yourself technique. Anybody, any layman can read a book and start doing acupressure tomorrow itself. There is nothing very big about it. Why? Because you are only pressing at points and you cannot go with a thumb as deep as you can go with a needle. So remember that. The depth of penetration which you achieve with a needle cannot be achieved with a thumb. And believe me not, try doing acupressure at any point which is, which if you try and do it will be much more painful than getting a needle at the same point. As a matter of fact, a lot of people will come to me fearing the needle and saying we have got acupressure done but actually surprised. Have you put the needle? I put eight needles and they said have you put any needles still now? So that is the difference between acupressure and acupuncture. And acupressure is a palliative method for giving you temporary relief. It cannot give you a permanent relief. Whereas acupuncture is a science which is properly documented, researched. Second, is it painful? 
when done by qualified practitioners, it is obviously painless. Any side effects? No side effects on occasional blues can be seen at an occasional acupuncture point. I might be on an average using about 50 to 20 needles in a patient every day. Average number of needles. But hardly any blues. So occasionally, and that's why you must, during your history taking, you must ask for <coughs> patients if you have any bleeding, diabetes or they are on uh, uh, blood thinners and all. That should be a very important part of your history taking. Then, uh, uh, how long does the treatment take? Duration of treatment is one hour and total duration of treatment which includes the waiting time in my clinic so I normally will tell them to plan one hour with me so that they are coming there, the waiting time, the treatment time, in, out, everything is about one hour. And uh, as I said to you, the frequency will depend upon the duration of the disease and everything. And what are the boundaries for integration? When can we use acupuncture? When other therapy is being used? I, uh, my simple answer is we can use it in any other system of medicine. There is no problem at all. Even if the patient is on painkillers, we can still use acupuncture. We, as a matter of fact, make them withdraw the painkillers slowly. As the patient gets better, we make them withdraw. Patients come to me taking uh, Larica, taking gamma pain for many, many months. They are on pain medication. So my job is to make them withdraw. As the pain gets better, we make them withdraw the medication. Same way with uh, asthmatics. Patients who are steroid dependent, very difficult cases for me also. Patients who are on just salvador. Identified one point in each of the channels which had the maximum energy flow. And then he found a, a neurometer. He devised a neurometer in which he could measure that energy flow onto a meter. And then get an average of all those readings and come to a conclusion after seeing that where is the energy excess, where is deficient. And that will give you an idea which channels or meridians in the body are diseased. And according to that, you could actually plan a treatment strategy. I will be showing you a live demonstration of this acuging machine which we use in our practice. After we complete this talk, on the first floor we have put it, put it up there so that you can have an idea exactly as to how we diagnose. We did it with CERN and we were able to identify all his problems whichever he had by just going through those 12 24 readings. So 12 readings on the left, 12 on the right. As I said to you, each acupuncture meridian is on the left side also, so on the right. So if you have a lung meridian on the left, you have it on the right. Large intestine left, large intestine right. So we take all those readings, take a mean value of that. Now we are in a computer <coughs> world, so it's much easier for us. So then we come to conclusions. So the basic diagnostic methods which we use traditionally were only two. The tongue and the pulse. Just by seeing the tongue, I can tell a lot of things. By seeing the pulse, because in Chinese medicine there are six pulses, three superficial, three deep on the left hand, three superficial, three deep on the right hand. It took me 20 years to master the pulse. It doesn't take less than that. Mm -hmm. Only in the last 15 years that I am sure when I put my hand on the pulse that I am on the right. Before that, I was also learning, 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 learning. So it's a very difficult, the most difficult art is pulse diagnosis. Tongue is much simpler. And then we have these modern methods of acuging and all. So I would still go by the basics of the traditional methods and use this as an additional tool to help me identify what I got from the tongue and the pulse. So that's what is acuging. And then acupuncture treatment program is explained to the protocol of the disorder and then treatment is given. And what is the protocol typical? It could be an acute backache patient coming to me where I will call him every day for the first 5, 7, 10 days. Once the acute phase is gone, immediately put him onto a thrice a week treatment more better twice a week, more better once a week. So the principle is very simple. The more the patient is getting better, the less he should be coming to see you. And then finish it off. Only in patients where we find he has got some allergic issues or something, where we find we change of season, he may have an asthma, we will call him back again one week or 10 days or maybe 15 days before the change of season. We we'll give him a few preventive treatments and that's it. And we, we may call him for one or two seasons. So that's the other part of it. Then after 50% improvement, frequency reduced to half, 75%, one-fourth. And acuting testing is done periodically to assess the improvement. So whatever improvement you are getting clinically, you should also be able to see it on the acuting machine. So we do this after every six treatment sessions, so that we have a record of the whole treatment, uh, uh, what were these recordings, and then we have another uh, after six treatment. So on the graph, you can see the changes in the graph pattern, if there are any. Next, please. Then. The most important FAQs, 
which you uh, probably a lot of people would be here. I would obviously open it up to everybody. But before that, I thought this is a lot of people confuse acupuncture with acupressure. Yeah. So we want to clarify that there are two totally two different systems. Acupressure is a do it yourself technique. Anybody, any layman can read a book and start doing acupressure tomorrow itself. There is nothing very big about it. Why? Because you are only pressing at points and you cannot go with a thumb as deep as you can go with a needle. So remember that. The depth of penetration which you achieve with a needle cannot be achieved with a thumb. And believe me not, try doing acupressure at any point which is, which if you try and do, it will be much more painful than getting a needle at the same point. As a matter of fact, a lot of people will come to me fearing the needle and saying we had got acupressure done, but actually surprised. Have you put the needle? I put eight needles and they said, have you put any needles till now? So that is the difference between acupressure and acupuncture. And acupressure is a palliative method for giving you temporary relief. It cannot give you a permanent relief. Whereas acupuncture is a science which is properly documented, researched. Second, is it painful? When done by qualified practitioners, it is obviously painless. Any side effects? No side effects on occasional bruise can be seen at an occasional acupuncture point. I might be on an average using about 50 to 20 needles in a patient every day. Average number of needles. But hardly any bruise. So occasionally, and that's why you must, during your history taking, you must ask for <coughs> patients if you have any bleeding diabetes or they are on uh, uh, blood thinners and all. That should be a very important part of your history taking. Then, uh, uh, how long does the treatment take? Duration of treatment is one hour. And total duration of treatment, which includes the waiting time in my clinic, so I normally will tell them, they plan one hour with me. So that they are coming there, the waiting time, the treatment time, in, out, everything is about one hour. And uh, as I said to you, the frequency will depend upon the duration of the disease and everything. And what are the boundaries for integration? When can we use acupuncture? When other therapy is being used? I, uh, my simple answer is we can use it in any other system of medicine. There is no problem at all. Even if the patient is on painkillers, we can still use acupuncture. We, as a matter of fact, make them withdraw the painkillers slowly. As the patient gets better, we make them withdraw. Patients come to me taking uh, Larica, taking GABA pain for many, many months. They are on pain medication. So my job is to make them withdraw. As the pain gets better, we make them withdraw the medication. Same way with uh, asthmatics. Patients who are steroid dependent, very difficult cases for me also. Patients who are on just Salbutol, they are the best patients for me. So, like, we can gradually make them recover. If they are on steroids, it will be a very slow process because steroid dependency again itself is a big issue. Then, uh, leading research everywhere in the world, but I think uh, what I have found from uh, wherever I have traveled, I have found Japanese and uh, Americans and Australians, they are the three people who are doing the maximum amount of work in it. A lot of work. And best place to learn acupuncture in India, at least we are the ones, we have been running this one year postgraduate certificate training course for medical graduates. And the entire theory part is online because a lot of the doctors have no time to come and attend a full course. So what we have devised is, as per WHO guidelines, wherein the entire theoretical component is given to them online, they can read that theory part at their own uh, will whenever they are free and for the hands-on uh, training which is most important we call them once every three months for 10 days consecutively and six hours a day so it comes to about 60 hours in those 10 days and four times a year it comes about 240 hours the recommended time is about 210 hours by the so we are always crossing that also and we keep in mind that we need to uh, follow guidelines which have been fixed by us World Authority on Health. Next please. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I think